Hey guys, let's talk about trim in the hip. So from the main menu, if we go into our settings and then our special tab over here, scroll down a bit and find Mi 8, we've got trimmer mode settings. There are three different options, default, central position trimmer mode, and joystick without springs and force feedback or FFB. The game doesn't really do a good job or any job of explaining what the difference between these is or why you might want to use them. It just puts them there and hopes that you'll know what it's talking about. You've also got a checkbox for rudder trimmer. Uh, I can go over this one really quickly and the other three I'm gonna have to show you in game because it's just too hard to explain from the menu. The rudder trimmer allows you to trim the position of your yaw or anti-torque axis. So with this enabled, um, you can when you press your trim button, it will also take into, a, into account the position of your pedals if you have them or your twist axis if you're using that. And it will save that so you can then let go of the twist or center out your pedals and it'll maintain the position it was in when you hit trim. This is important if you have a twist axis. If you're not running a twist axis, if you have pedals, probably don't need it. You could run it anyway. That's totally personal preference. Um, I find that my pedals are light enough that I don't need to, that I just kind of hold them a bit to the left or a bit to the right as I'm flying as needed. Um, but if you use a twist axis, then yes, definitely you want to have this on to save your wrist, it will help you. All right, so the other three, default, central position, joystick without springs and FFP. So default, I'm just gonna cover what these are quickly and then we'll go have a more in-depth look in game. Default, when you trim, will update the position or the uh, new zero for your axes, as well as the new relative position of your joystick to that zero point immediately. So it takes effect instantly as soon as you trim. The central position trimmer mode will update the zero point immediately, but it won't update the new relative position of your joystick until you return it to center. This is sort of a safer mode with the downside of you need to return your joystick back to its physical center point before you have control again, so you're giving up cyclic authority until you recenter your physical joystick. I prefer this mode, some people don't, for that reason I just mentioned, they don't like giving up that cyclic authority for any amount of time. I don't like the behavior in default where you press trim and it essentially doubles the uh, axis values for both your pitch and roll. It sends you wobbling all over the place. Anyway, um, the last one, joystick without springs and force feedback. This is for joysticks that do not center themselves and also most importantly, stay put when you let go. So if you push your joystick forward halfway and then let go and it stays there, this is the setting for you. If it returns to center, or if you don't have springs and it just kind of flops out to the side, then this is not for you. This is not gonna help you. This is for joysticks that behave like an actual cyclic where they stay in place when you let go. So let's go put it in default. We'll jump into the game and we'll take a look at how these work. All right, so we're in the cockpit of the hip and let's take a look at trim in general first. For this video, I've enlisted the help of my picture-in-picture, -picture, my webcam with my physical joystick, and you can that way see the position of the physical joystick in relation to the position of the virtual joystick, as well as the controls indicator up on the top left, and how all of them relate to each other as we start to trim. All right, so trim in general is a way of reducing pilot workload and fatigue by allowing you to take your hand off the joystick and change its centering point for different flight conditions. So for example, in the hip, our takeoff position is somewhat aft and right, somewhere around here, depending on wind and what other conditions. Um, but this is kind of where we're gonna start for our takeoff. Now, if I don't wanna have to hold this deflection by hand, I should be able to trim it and say, you know what, this is the joystick's new center point. I want you to return to this point, not to the actual center. So it's just a way of saying, this is my new center point, and then I can work the joystick around its physical center point while the game figures that I'm around the new logical center point here. So let's take a look at that in action. It's, um, it's a nice feature to have, but this is the default mode and you'll see pretty quickly why I don't use it. So for default trim, if we pull some aft and some right side click here. Um, let's, uh, let's hit the trim on the thumb and watch what happens to both the, the virtual joystick and that diamond up there at the top right or top left corner. So ready, trim. I haven't moved my physical joystick, but the virtual one just sort of doubled in position. It is now further right and further aft than what I was originally commanding. So I'm gonna reset it with my nose wheel steering button. 
Now they're back in the same spot. Do that again. Trim. And it instantly doubles in position. One more time. Trim. And there it goes. Now you can kind of work around that if you trim and then immediately return your joystick to center. So trim. And you'll get this little bump like that. Not bad, but you have to be very careful when you're doing this that you trim center very quickly. Trim center. And you're still going to move around a bit, potentially more than you'd like. And that, to me, is the reason that I don't like the default mode. So let's get into the air here and see what that looks like when we're flying. All right, so we're flying along over Vegas here, and we're trying to get ourselves into a position where the helicopter is relatively stable in forward level flight. And then we're going to trim to that position so that we can take our hand off the joystick and not have to hold this forward and right deflection as we fly, because we're just going to fly in a straight line for a while. So what happens when I press trim now if I'm happy with this position? Trim, and it's nose diving. Because it just doubled the amount of forward stick that I was holding. Now if I let go, it'll return to that position that I wanted, and it should even itself out, and that's great, but... I nearly killed myself here diving into the ground as soon as I press trim. So let's reset that. Alright, so let's try that again. And this time I'm going to try to return the joystick to center as quickly as I can to avoid that sort of nosedive. So I trim and then I'm going to return this joystick to center quickly. Trim. It still wobbles around a bit, but if you're fast enough with it, fairly non, fairly uh, negligible. You know, you can work around that, and I think a lot of people are fine with that. But as you make little corrections, you know, say I need to make a little more nose down, and then I double it when I press that. Then I come back nose up, and I double it again. You know, every time I make a correction, it sort of doubles that position of my joystick, unless I immediately return it back to center. So, you can get used to this. It's fine. But I find that the instant update of the joystick's relative position leads to some wobbling and nosedives and other issues that I'm just not expecting or not ready for. Okay, so let's take a look at central position trimmer mode this time. So the, the basic idea is the same. We have a new center point we want to uh, designate. We want to say this is my new center point here somewhere so that I don't have to constantly hold deflection on the stick and I can let it go it will stay there. But the problem with default mode was that as soon as we pressed it, it updated the position of our joystick and kind of doubled the value of our axes. So central position is a solution to that. So if we pull some aft and right cyclic for kind of a takeoff position and then hit trim on the thumb, the diamond stays in the same place and the virtual joystick stays in the same place. And at this point, I can move the joystick freely in any direction and it will not change. The position of that joystick is staying exactly the same until I return this joystick to the center. So when I bring it back to the center point, now suddenly it controls where the logical axis is, where the diamond position is. I can go further out and then trim there, and it won't take effect until I return the joystick to center. The advantage of this is that I don't get that weird doubling effect where the value or the position of the diamond suddenly jumps when I trim. Instead, I lose cyclic authority until I can return my physical joystick back to center. So it's a trade-off. I personally prefer it. I find the position that I'm happy in, I trim, and then I let my joystick come back to center. And then I can make little corrections from here. I can come a little bit right, a little bit left, whichever way I need to go, and I can make little adjustments from there but I never have that doubling effect. I never find that my helicopter wobbles or nosedives or climbs rapidly right after I trim, and I don't have to rush to get my joystick back to center unless I require cyclic authority soon. And that's kind of where the downside is for, I think, people who don't use this, is if you happen to be in a situation where you need that cyclic authority back and you can't find your joystick center point quickly, you're not going to get that authority back. So if I trim here and then I can't find the center point and I'm searching for it, or it doesn't register for some reason, some joysticks aren't that precise, you're going to have problems. You're not going to be able to stop yourself from crashing into the ground. So it's a question of preference, and it's a question of hardware as well. For me, with this joystick, it's the VKB Gunfighter Base with a Modern Combat Pro Grip. 
it's pretty easy to find the center point. It returns right back to center with no dead zone, no issues, and that's great. My previous joystick, the X56, not so much the case. I had a massive dead zone in the center to sort of account for that so that it would, you know, anywhere around here would have, would have counted as center because it was not precise enough to return to its actual center point. All right, so let's get in the air and see how this one works too. All right, so we're flying along here and we're relatively happy with our current cyclic position, but we don't want to keep holding the stick this far forward. We'd like to be able to let go of it. So we hit our trim and nothing moves. Now I can move the joystick around again freely and I have no cyclic authority right now until I bring it back to center. And you can see that the helicopter is climbing a little bit. If I needed to say, uh, settle that out, or if it were tithing right now and I were in big trouble, I would have to get this back to center before I had any control. So if I bring it back to the center point, now I have control again. But now I can let go, and we're in our nice stable forward flight here. And then I can make little adjustments as needed. So if I wanted to come nose down just a bit, just retrim it again. And then it'll start to dive. Bring it back up, and retrim it. And I can make these little adjustments as long as I always come back to center after each one. And I shouldn't ever get that weird or that um, intense wobbling that the default mode tends to give you. So for me, this is my preference. I find this much smoother when I trim. I don't get any unexpected behavior. The helicopter stays where it is. It's just on me to make sure that I get my joystick back to center so that I have authority again over the cyclic axes. All right, so our third option is for joysticks that don't have a centering spring or um, force feedback. This is basically if you've got a legit cyclic that has force trim and it stays in place and you're using the trim function on the joystick itself to update the physical joystick's physical trim and the in-game trim really doesn't matter. So in this case, if I put the joystick out here and I hit trim, nothing happens, it just comes back. Because it's expecting the actual joystick to handle trim, as far as I know. The actual in-game trim isn't doing anything. Now maybe it's doing something behind the scenes that I don't know about because I don't have the requisite hardware for, to really test this. But if you had the kind of cyclic that stayed in place when you let go, then this would be the option for you. All right, now the last thing I wanted to show you was what happens when you have a joystick that has removable springs, but no force feedback, but doesn't stay in place when you take the spring out. So this is my old X56 joystick here that I upgraded um, away from. Uh, and I can do the same thing with the VKB stick here. I can take the springs out of the base and it'll just kind of flop to the side and stay there. But it's much faster to show you on the X56. This one actually requires taking out some screws and some springs. This one I can do just by hand in a few seconds. So there's a twist ring here. Joystick comes off. There you go. And there's a snap ring. That comes off. It just slides up. And then here. This is the last part. You separate this part that holds the spring in place, and then you can take the spring out. Now the X56 comes with um, four or five different springs, I think, of different strengths, which is actually a really cool feature. It's one of the things that makes this one of the best joysticks on paper before the QA issues. But we can take that out, and then we can put it back together again. put our snap ring back on and then put our joystick back on and it just takes a matter of seconds to do now from this point the joystick just falls wherever you put it but it's great for flying a helicopter because you have absolutely no resistance in any direction you could hold this deflection or that deflection or this deflection indefinitely until your arm gets tired of just being in that position the problem is, for me, like I love this for hovering, for bombing around in airfields, for all kinds of different short flights. The problem is always, as soon as I get into a long flight and I want to fly 50 nautical miles in a straight line, and I'm holding the joystick like this, and I'm starting to get tired of holding the joystick like this, and I just want to be able to trim it and let go. And even in center trim mode, if I trim and let go, yeah, the, uh, the logical axis is going to stay where I want, and I can do this all day, and the joystick's not going to change the position of my helicopter but I'm gonna to have to find the center point before I get control back. And when you don't have any centering springs, especially on a joystick like with this gimbal that doesn't really give you much feedback otherwise, it can be pretty tough to find that center point 
efficiently and effectively. And if something comes up quickly and you're, you know, scrambling to find that center point, you're going to go right through it and you're going to cause yourself to wobble and oscillate all over the place. So it seems like a great idea. It is for short flights, but you're going to run into issues for longer flights if you have no spring at all and it just kind of goes wherever. Trying to trim out uh, for longer flights and then regain control. Like I said, I can do that in this stick as well. It just takes longer and I don't want to go through that where I can do this one entirely by hand. So hopefully that explains trim and different options that you have available to you in the hip. Um, I really do recommend trying out the center position trim mode. I think it's great. Um, it saves me from all those sort of unexpected wobbles after you hit trim if you don't move the joystick back to center fast enough. But try it for yourself, see what you like, and let me know if uh, I missed anything, got anything wrong. See you guys next time.